Good morning, everyone. My name is Dina, and I'm a prevention specialist. Hi, and I'm Gail Dackler, and I'm a prevention specialist at Google Easter Seals Monday Valley. And before we start our presentation today, we want you to know that this is a judgment-free zone. What does that mean exactly? We don't judge you. We know that many people have gone through a lot of issues with the opiate crisis in the community, Montgomery County especially, and that we see this on the news every day. And so please take the special self-care that you need um, at any time during this presentation. Yeah. So if you need to pause this, because maybe this has affected your life in some way, maybe you might be feeling something a little bit. I know like there's been a couple presentations that I've had to like just kind of leave the room and just take a minute just to kind of collect my thoughts. Please do so. And, and also reach out then if you do need to talk to somebody. At the end, we're going to share some phone numbers that you can definitely call any of those numbers to, um, to talk to somebody if you need to. Um, so please do so. All right. We'll get started with the presentation really soon. Good morning, everybody. Hi, my name is Gail, and I am a prevention specialist at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. And my name is Dina, also prevention specialist at Goodwill Easter Seals Miami Valley. Hi, and we're here. We're we would normally be in your classroom, and we would normally be coming to you know at your school talking to you about medication safety, but under the circumstances, um, we're, we decided to do a Google Classroom. So thanks for watching us. Um, we're going to talk about prescription medication safety. So Gail, yeah, I have a question. So when we think about medications, how do they help us? Oh my gosh, medications help us in so many ways. Like one way I can think, Dina, is that they help to cure diseases. Yes. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. Can you think of anything else? Wow, they help us to uh, release pain. They help us with pain. Maybe they help us, uh, maybe our moods too, to kind of like even our moods out. Right, with anxiety, depression, medications are really supposed to help us. And so, but they're best used as when uh, directed by a healthcare professional. So we want you all to know that medications are best as when used by a healthcare professional. So we're going to talk a little bit about what is medication misuse. So I'm going to read you some scenarios and at your home there. Please let us know what you think. Is this good use or misuse? So scenario number one, Miss Dina, we have uh, a, an individual is taking a medication for a different reason than prescribed. Is that a good use or misuse? That is misuse. Wow, and, and really, and, and we need to make sure we understand why we're taking that medication, because that Dina is correct, is correct about that. Making sure we understand why we're taking that meds and not using it for a different reason. In scenario number two, an individual is taking more of the medication than prescribed. It's often the case that people misuse, misusing are not doing it on purpose. Um, so is that something that, is that good use or misuse, Dina? Misuse. It sure is. So, we need, so taking more medication than prescribed is misuse. And our last scenario right here, an individual is sharing their medication with somebody else. Is that good use or misuse? That is misuse. And we also want to share that that is illegal and we want to make sure that you keep your medication to yourself with your name on your prescription. Exactly. So let's recap. Misusing medication is taking more than prescribed, taking a medication for a different reason, or sharing or taking someone else's medication. And that's regardless if they're your BFF or not. That means your best friend for life, but that's regardless of if they're close to you. But if it's my mom and dad? No. Okay. Still not okay because why? Why do you think that? Why should we not? Well, you know, our medications are kind of really, they're unique to each of our bodies, right? Mm -hmm. And so when a doctor prescribes us something, what are, what are they looking at? What do they, what do they look into? Okay, so Gail and I are not quite the same size, so we're looking at body weight, a lot of different reasons. So medications will affect our, us different ways because of how much we weigh. In our medical history, maybe I have something that's going on different. Maybe I have heart disease and Gina doesn't. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that they look into as well. Right. We can also run into problems with allergies or things like that. Maybe that's something that you can't even take. So what if you don't know what's in it? 
So some people misuse prescription medications. Do we think that's a risky decision? Yes, it is. Uh -huh. And we just went over one really good reason why, because our medications are made for specifically for us and prescribed for specific reasons. So if we do share medications or take somebody else's medications, it might not be it might not mix well with the medications that we're taking. It might not maybe we're allergic to it. There's lots of different reasons. Right. And so many different consequences and we'll go over many more later. But one of them starts with an A and I'll go with addiction. And so addiction is a mental health issue that a lot of people can go through and once they start taking medication that doesn't belong to them, they can lead into a deeper um, issue which can lead to death. Do the majority of teens misuse prescription drugs? Let's think about that for a second. The people around us, are they misusing medications? Hmm. What do you think, Dina? I kind of think more of the adults are, but I bet, I bet a lot of you young people, do you think that a, a lot of people around you, your friends, or maybe some people you don't know are using a lot? We're gonna find out here in just a second. Let's share. Fact is, no. So really, only six out of seven teens in our study misuse medications. So you're doing a really good job. Why are we here talking to you about it then? Because we want you to continue those good habits and we want to connect you with, um, with help if you need help and you are misusing medication. That's right. But it says here, yet prescription drug misuse remains a problem nationwide. We're going through a lot of things in our county alone, lots of issues, and we're going to talk more about that in the coming slides. So Dina and I, we were part of our code team, which is our community overdose action team. And so um, we've, done, we've been presenting for over two years. And our community overdose action team helps to connect people to treatment, helps to connect families and individuals to recovery supports, um, helps to educate our community about what is addiction, what is medication misuse. And so we're, we're and we work with all kinds of professionals, whether it's our EMTs, our hospitals, our um, our families, our community members. And so that's something where we're all working together to to hopefully to um, for overdoses to um, to go down and also to, and so we're going to come up with, with the community overdose action team is a great entity that helps to bring the community together um, we have the um, young adult advisory board right right and that's with UT Youth International we'll talk to you more about that but there's uh, a lot of people that represent your age group and different communities so, um, and Dean and I were part of our community overdose action team. And what that does is, is we help people to educate people um, about what addiction is, about prevention steps that we can all take in our homes. It connects people to treatment. It helps to support our EMTs and our hospitals um, when they're dealing with, with one of our community members who's suffering from addiction or an overdose. Um, we also, it also, we also have a really strong recovery community. And so that is something that we want to educate our community members about how people can access treatment, how we can get into counseling, into therapy, so that we can be a stronger Montgomery County. Um, in 2017 is when we had our most overdose deaths. We had 566 in Montgomery County. Uh, we're going to go to the next slide and look at nationally what that looked like. Um, so in 2017, there were over 70,000 people who passed away in the United States alone from unintentional drug overdoses. There were 5,111 people who passed away in the state of Ohio. And in our county, we had 566 people. And I have added the 2018 numbers. Um, and so we have gone down by 49%. So working together in the COAT team, we have um, we have educated um, our community members on how to use Narcan um, that has saved many, many lives, how to access treatment, how, how to, um, you know, building our recovery community. Those are what, these are great, great steps that we've all taken to make our community stronger. Well, let's talk about May, Gail. Look at that spike at 81. Why, why is it that high? Can you tell us why? So this right here, this is from our public health, and this are our unintentional drug overdose those deaths by um, year and by month. And in May of 2017, 
there were, uh, unfortunately, there were 81 people who passed away in Montgomery County. Um, and that was from, we had uh, a few batches of carfentanil, um, and they, unfortunately, they killed people. Dan, can you talk, talk a little bit about more about what carfentanil is and why we need to be aware of that? And be well, yes, well, carfentanil, first of all, is an elephant tranquilizer, and so it's really not meant for human consumption. But the problem is, as we talked about with addiction earlier, it becomes a mental health disorder. Those people who found out that the carfentanil was getting people really, really, I would say, happy, they thought, they went and chased that high. And so once they chased that high, they um, became overdosed because it's too much for their bodies. So that's what carfentanil does, and it, it caused lots of deaths in a short amount of time. But here's the good news, you can make a difference, okay? You all are role models, and today, we're coming to you as prevention specialists, but we all are prevention specialists. So we want you to make sure that you take this information home to your families today, and share with them all that we've shared with you. So we're gonna go over three basic steps that we often take in our homes. The first step is to keep for yourself. Okay, so let's look at what that looks like. Oh. This is a funny slide, hmm. Let's just look at it for a second together. So here you'll see the toothbrush, medication, and this is underwear. Hmm, what is that doing here on the board? Well, <laughs> this is telling us that you would not share your toothbrush, I bet. Would you share my toothbrush? I don't want to share your toothbrush, oh, Dina. Don't offer that to me. No way. <laughs> and underwear, you know, sometimes we go, oh, I can share with my brother or sister, but anyway, no. We say, oh, that's nasty. So we think about our underwear and our toothbrush, our prescriptions the same. We want to put those in the same sacred category and not share our medications with anyone. Right? Right. Uh, what are some other things you wouldn't share? Oh, let's see. Hairbrushes? Hairbrushes. Mm hmm Yeah. I've heard, yeah. Tina, I'm not going to share my potato chips. Please don't put your hand out on my potato chips again. Hello. I know. <laughs> So she doesn't want to share her potato chips because, you know, we're thinking about germs and all that, that passing back and forth. Also, maybe towels and things like that. But we also want to talk to you with hygiene about waters, bottled waters, cups, and things like that. Even if you're doing them up high like that, you can pass a lot of disease um, through sharing. So we take a moment in this presentation to talk about sharing so we can stay safe. Okay. Okay. And our next step is to follow instructions. That seems really simple, but sometimes instructions maybe aren't as clear as what we what we need them to be. That's right. Let's see. So on this one, um, some instructions are meant to be followed. Like some of you might be applying for college, or some of you might be applying for a job. If you apply for a job, what you want to do is you want to make sure you fill out that application completely. You have your correct name on there, your correct phone number, your address, your references. You want to make sure all those things are correct so that the, your job will call, that, call you and then call your references and everything will be seamless. Same with, with basketball. I know I play basketball, oh my gosh, and I think my teammates wanted to like hurt me a few times, oh, you know. Yeah, what did you do? Double dribble, queen. Traveling. Traveling, okay, you know, and, and the famous like shooting the basket in the opponent's, oh. you know. Oh, and making that two-pointer for the other team, like, <laughs> oh yeah, that's me. But, but we need to make sure that we understand the rules even if we're playing a game or, you know, or if we're applying for a job. Same with prescription medications. We need to understand what those, what the directions are on the bottle. That's right. We want to really stay safe and read. So this why follow instructions. There's a whole uh, prescription label here, just a sample, and it's talking about number one. It says how much and how often. And here it says take one to two capsules by mouth every eight hours. The reason for the medication is as needed for arm pain. What we also want to look at too is who's this medication for? I think it says Jamie Smith. Mm -hmm. What's Jamie taking? Jamie, Jamie's taking Vicodin, I see. Yeah. That's right mm -hmm. there, okay? She's so got these capsules to take, and even from what pharmacy. And so it's good to read that really carefully, especially make sure your name's on there. Because it's possible we all make mistakes. And so read everything and make sure it's yours before you start using it. You want to make sure that your medication, the name of your medication, 
and is what your doctor prescribed you too because sometimes maybe there's little accidents sometimes where maybe you're given the wrong medication so you want to make sure you have the correct medication as well right and then how many caps are in the bottle as well how much and what's the dosage but also if you have questions we're here to help you to learn to ask more questions with your parents and just your doctors and nurses to say you know this says take one to two capsules by mouth every eight hours, but then it says as needed for arm pain. So would you have any questions? Would you have any questions? I would. Okay. What kind of questions would you ask? I would. Be, I would. I would want to know what kind of pain I might be having. Mm -hmm. You know. So I'd ask about because I I know healing hurts. Because I'm like, have you any of you had a broken bone? I'm like, sometimes that hurts really bad, doesn't it? So we want to make sure we understand what is healing and what is pain around healing. What's okay to feel. And also, when do we need to take the medication? If we, ha we had um, arm surgery, when do we need to take the one pill? And what kind of pain that we will be feeling if we need to take two? Right. So, as needed. So, this is about using medication safely, okay? So what about if your medications aren't working? Mm -hmm. What do you do? Yeah, who do you call? I was gonna make it good, uh, uh, funny, but I'm not gonna do it. But oh, okay. yeah, but, oh, okay. who would you call? Yeah, could you call your, you know, would you call your best friend? Would you, would you just go ahead and take medic the extra medication? Would you call your physician, mm -hmm. parents, your coach? Who would you call? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that I would call. I try to call my doctor. I try to call them first because they they prescribe it to me. However, if I couldn't get them on the phone, you know that nurse that's in the room with them just as qualified to tell you about medicine and who else is just as qualified even more so they went to school forever to take it they sure did learn well, about medicine because a lot of times your pharmacist is, is in the office and they're more available than your doctors are so you can always call them and ask them oh yeah, yeah. the pharmacist is great and they love to take time they even ask you when you go you have any questions so make sure you take that opportunity to ask about side effects and anything like that mm -hmm. And then there's alternatives to opioids. And opioids, again, are painkillers. I want to talk about that again. But alternatives to trying to use pain medicine, what, what are some of those we can think of? Um, I tell you what, when I think about alternatives, my thing that I love to do, Dina, is just move. Because a lot of times well, I'll get a headache or I'll get a backache, and like I'm going to start walking. And that movement clears stuff up a lot of times. So that's my big alternative, that's actually movement. What about you? One of my favorites is to try a drink of water. If you have a, a short headache or something, maybe it's a big pain, but try water to see if that releases the pain first, and then see if you need a, uh, some medicine. But let's see what we have on the board and some answers other people gave. The first one is, it's mindfulness. And do you know what mindfulness is? It's being in the moment, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's kind of like just relaxing yourself and making, you know, stretching a little bit, deep breathing, maybe closing your eyes, but just taking that moment and being in the moment, not thinking about like that fight that you had with your best friend yesterday, or not worrying about this test that you're gonna have two days from now. It's like just being right here, right now. Right there, right now, that's mm -hmm. good. Then there's yoga. I know many of you may have heard of yoga, but that's a, a nice stretching routine you can do and learn to breathe deeply, but that often there's an instructor that teaches you moves or you can find some online. Or work with a chiropractor. Yeah, that's something where they, they help to adjust your back. Your, you know, your, your back might be out of line, so they, work, they get your vertebrae to be straight, and a lot of times that helps to deal with, with pain. Then there's physical therapy where you can, you know, get some, uh, go into the whirlpool with um, special practitioners and really have fun with that. Uh, physical therapy is a great way to relieve pain and get the muscles back in order. And stretching. Stretching was not my favorite part when I played sports, but I'd say you would have probably saved me a lot of injuries. But stretching and just getting your blood flowing, getting um, clean air into your lungs, a great thing to do for pain. Absolutely, and the last one here is just what Gail talked about earlier, exercise, move, take a walk, get your blood moving, that may very well relieve the pain. All right, so let's think about it. What are five things that you can do to 
instead of taking aspirin or ibuprofen for a headache? So, Dina, that's a great question, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, think about the list we gave you before and try to remind yourself and some of the things we said, but I'm gonna say my favorite again. Water, drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my other favorite thing to do is take a nap. You know, I love naps. I'm sure you guys do too. Mm -hmm. And when she says take, uh, take a nap, I think about finding a quiet place, sometimes with the migraine headaches, turn the lights down. Um, also, I thought about heating pad too. Oh, my shoulder yes. hurt so bad one time. And you know, I didn't need pills for my shoulder pain, I just put a heat pad on it and got on with my day. You know, sometimes I just need to talk to a friend. Maybe I'm just like worried about like a lot of stuff, I got a lot of stuff on my mind and I get a headache because of that. So sometimes I just call my best friend and go, hey, can you talk for a couple minutes with me? And that helps out. But how about when you get hungry? How do you act when you get hungry? Do you have to bring that up? I will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but me too. Or oh, yeah. I am horrible to be around. Yeah. <laughs> well, what do we call it? We're a little hungry and a little angry. So yeah. sometimes Gail gets a little black. I get angry. I'm, get I'm, I'm angry. terrible. <laughs> I'm terrible. <laughs> but we, we want to make sure that we eat. Make sure you eat and keep yourself also really hydrated. So make sure you drink plenty of fluids and not just juices and pop. Plenty of water. And I'm sure you guys thought of plenty more because there's a whole list of things that you can do. And each thing, my, each person, we might have something that is better for us. So the things that we that are on our list may not apply to you, but we need to figure out what does apply to you. That's right. So some people misuse medication by taking it for a reason different than prescribed. So we want to think about what what you teens, what do you think teens said about that? What, what reasons did teens give for misusing? What do you think they said? I'm curious. I just want to know. A lot of my friends are doing it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a little peer pressure. Um, sometimes we all get depressed, you know. The weather, not enough sun, so sometimes it might be some depression. But let's see what reasons teen gave. Okay. Okay. Oh. Deal with depression. I think that's the best. When Dean and I have been in the schools, that's something that we hear quite a bit, actually, dealing with our emotions, anxiety, um, and so that's sometimes what kids have talked to us about. And so, injury. If you're in pain, a lot of teens might misuse medication, okay? This is not our favorite, okay? Boredom. We're gonna talk about that boredom some more, but some teens said they were bored and that's why they misused. And the last one, to manage stress. So, especially this day and age, with everybody having to stay at home, um, some of us might feel a little bored. We don't have things to do. So we really, this next area is something I want you to think about um, what you can do in your life to um, to find a better, to find fun things to do for you, so you can make great decisions for yourself. I hope you have a pen and pad available too. Kind of want you to write some things down. And that way you can remember what you said so when you, uh, you can look back. So this question is, what could teens do instead of misusing? And we're going to identify a few positive alternatives. We'll show you our list. Okay, so our list says go to the movies. So maybe we can't go to the movies right now, but maybe we can have a movie party at our house. Maybe we can watch Netflix or we might have other, you need to watch movies on YouTube. That's what I do a lot. I watch a lot of documentaries. YouTube. But that's something where find those shows that you love to watch, watch them, and maybe you can have a Zoom watch party with your friends. Right. Volunteer. You can volunteer for a prevention group. I started out this job of volunteering for prevention, and look what it led to. Enjoy your hobbies. That's something, find out what do you love to do. This is a great time to figure out, like, hey, do I like to create art? Am I a musician? Are there sports that I love to play? But take that time now while we have it to figure out what are these things that you love to do. And then since you're at home, kind of figuring out exercises to do at home, getting really creative. Of course, I know you can go outside still, so you can jump rope, you definitely could walk. So there's some options there for exercise. And lastly, it says host a game night. So many things we can do with a game night, right? I, I saw you the other day playing, what, trivia? All right. I, you know, you can have online game parties 
Um, somebody just showed me online bingo, and I'm like, that's really fun, where you can, you can host different games, or you can play virtually online with your friends. So making sure we have those outlets that we're connecting with people and that we're having fun with that. That's right. And connect with your parents and some adults about how to play cards, some card games you may not have learned yet. They can teach you some games. And so that's a great way to connect as a family. So that's fun to do as well. Get a deck of cards. So board games. And I would encourage you, like, if you love museums and looking at art, there's all kinds of virtual tours that you can take online. Um, so please look into those things. And if you need any help with that, please call your school or if you can call us. You'll, you'll get our phone number here in a second. We would love to share some ideas with you. That's right. And don't forget the music. Turn that music on and turn it up and have a good time. You can move your body and, and you know, just enjoy. Do what you love. That's what we talk about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And lastly, is be a great role model. What you do matters. Sometimes I remember being at your age, and I would be like, it doesn't matter what I do. I want you to think about the, when you were younger, who did you look up to? You looked up to some of the older kids in your school. You looked up to your older siblings. You do matter, and your actions matter. And, and, and even though we might not think, oh, like they're not looking at what I'm doing, people are watching what you're doing. They sure are. Those little brothers and little sisters, little cousins, they're all watching you. And you're already doing a good job, by the way. We're not seeing you're not. So continuing that, mm -hmm. okay? So these are some steps that you can do to continue those great habits. You can learn more. You can get online. You can go to generationrx.org and you can learn more about medication safety. Here's also the other great website is called Take Charge Ohio. You're welcome to go there and look at your, all their wonderful um, resources. Wonderful. So we want you to share the information that you've learned today again. And number three, talk with a trusted adult. Please make sure that you have someone in your life that you know you can confine in and share with. If you feel like you're, you're wanting to misuse or you know someone around you who's trying things and you know they shouldn't, it's okay to tell. Don't be afraid of being that person that they say, oh, they're a, they're a tattletale or whatever you say, you know, snitches. I don't know what you say, but make sure that you go ahead and tell somebody. Mm -hmm. See something, say something. And once, you can also get involved with the youth blood prevention group. There's plenty of groups here in the county. Um, see if there's, um, go to your guidance counselor, talk to your teachers to see if there's a youth blood prevention group at your school. There's also one here in the county called um, Youth to Youth. Mm -hmm. Great group. And there's some area resources that we'd like you to share with your family. Uh, there's a Get Help Now application, and most of us have smartphones, and so you go into your Play Store on your phone and download the Get Help, Help Now app of Montgomery County. Mm -hmm. Want to make sure you look that up, and it's connected with the Adams Board. Um, if somebody is in crisis, um, they can call our crisis care number. That is 224-4646. Um, in case they are like feeling really bad and they have shared with you that they that they're thinking about suicide, that is a great resource that's here in Montgomery County. Sure is. And then fourth here we have the Miami Valley Warm Line. You can dial the number five two eight seven 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 and ask as many questions as you need concerning prevention and other needs your family may have during this time. Mm -hmm. And we also have the crisis text line. Uh, Sometimes people, instead of calling, they feel more comfortable texting. So you can text for hope to 741-741, and that is something that they can connect you with the needed resources. So Dean and I, we, I, I want to say thank you for um, attending this Generation Rx class. We hope that you had a great day. Um, be safe around medications. Please share, share, share the information. Have a great rest of your day.